This is the Mosh Pit Backstage Podcast for punk, metal and rock interviews and segments. I'm on the phone right now with Josh from Earthcaller. Josh, how are you going? Uh, yeah, good yourself. Very well. Um, so you're on tonight to talk about Crystal Death, your new album. Um, it's your second album now. How has your sound evolved from uh, your first album? Has it like um, progressed in any way, evolved, or kind of remained the same? Tell us a little um, bit about it. Uh, well, uh, I would say that um, I would say that our sound has uh, progressed in a couple of different ways. Um, when we went into writing the, the the record, we consciously made like a, a decision to uh, to to try and mature our sound, I suppose. Um, and then, uh, even though the decision was like a conscious one, it sort of just happened naturally. Like uh, uh, when we were writing the songs. Uh, our, uh, initially, our first album, it was kind of a more political one, but when we went into writing this, it's sort of become a more introspective, personal album. Uh, and uh, that, that part of our progression has been something that I've uh, really enjoyed. Uh, lyrically, uh, being able to speak about uh, things that, that I'm going through rather than what the world is going through has sort of been a bit more of a personal catharsis. And uh, the... The, uh, the fans seem to have uh, really uh, enjoyed the change as well, which has just been a, a very humbling experience for me as well. Has any other um, members of the band put in, like, do you do all your lyric writing yourselves or is it sort of a collection of um, personal experiences from the band as a whole? Um, well, uh, I w- well, lyrically... Uh, Interestingly enough, uh, I, I, I write them by myself, but I'll, mm-hmm. I'll get the guys to like proofread them and stuff like that. Make sure that they uh, make sure that they dig what I'm saying, and that, that's always uh, that's always just a really sort of simple process, just like a little tick off. Uh, but um, but uh, I've written songs that uh, are about things that I've gone through, and uh, interestingly enough, you know, some of the band members have also gone through similar things and uh, mm-hmm. it's, uh, I think it's been like a really sort of like cathartic process for everybody with this record. Sounds good. Um, so what went into the recording process? How long did it take you guys? Uh, well, we started pre-production for this record probably actually like around the start or middle of 2015. Um Earth Caller, as a sort of rule, we never stop writing songs, so we've already been writing for the, our follow-up album, just so we, it's, it's just a way of avoiding getting writer's block, you just keep yourself in the zone for it, I guess. But um, for Crystal Death, I think the pre-production uh, demoing process started at around mid-2015, and that went on, uh, that pre-production process went on until around uh, the middle of 2016, and then we started recording the record, and um and then yeah, we had it done. Uh, we had it done sort of around maybe mid two thousand and seventeen. So I suppose mm-hmm. the, the the process sort of spanned across a couple of years. Um. So, along with the release of this album, you're heading out on an East Coast tour in a few yeah. weeks. Um, is this your first headlining tour? Uh, no, it's not. We've done. Um, we we did a nationwide headline tour about uh about maybe a year and a half ago Mm -hmm. um that was kind of like the final um that was kind of like the final tour for the the degenerate album cycle then after that we um then after that we did like a main support tour with like uh super heist uh and then we sort of went quiet uh while we were creating the album for a while and this is our first headline tour back since uh we started uh making crystal death Oh, nice. Must be exciting for you guys. Um, you're heading on the road with Heiss and Advocates. Um, yeah. Are they, like, your mates, or did you just hit them up being like, hey, guys, we like your music, do you want to come on tour? Uh, well, uh, 
we uh, we know members of, of both bands. Uh, we haven't sort of uh, really hung out that much. However, Earth Caller uh, really, really likes both, uh, like myself and the rest of the boys, really like uh, what those two bands are putting out at the moment. So we're looking forward to becoming uh, to becoming Road Dogs together, good buddies. Yeah, well, sounds good. I'm sure it'll be lots of fun. Um, so what are your plans for the rest of 2018? Uh, for the rest of 2018, I suppose our plan is to uh, sort of work towards uh, getting overseas and stuff like that. Uh, we're in the process of doing that now. Uh, also, um, I can't really say too much, but we've just uh, we've just uh, sort of uh, gotten done organising uh, another another run. Uh, so for the, all the uh, for all the people from um, from Adelaide and some regional towns that are upset that we haven't uh, uh, put shows in their area on this tour, they won't have to worry about that for very long because we'll be coming to see them very soon. Nice. It's good that you're getting out there. Um, on Mosh Pit, this is what I ask every guest that I have on my show, is um, I'm really passionate about local Australian music and just want to ask who are your favorite local acts going around at the moment who should we be getting around uh you should be getting around dread you should be getting around the burden you should be getting around uh sorry out there's so many um uh last Hill from sydney uh yeah. DVS, dvsr they're not exactly like a local act but they're, they're the homies um you should be getting around uh, Uni- Universe from Brisbane, um, She Cries Wolf from Brisbane. Uh, there's just so many. Like, uh, right. I'm, sh- I'm sure that, uh, like, uh, considering you have such a passion about uh, local music, you would you would know that it's literally Baskin and Robbins. There's like 31 flavors. Like, there's, like, there's just so much good shit going around. Good stuff. Yeah, Sorry. we're so lucky in Australia. Our live music scene is forever growing. Um, really good to have you guys out there. Looking forward to the tour. The album's great. Um, just before we head off, we're going to play one of the singles off the album now, um, Fall. Do you have anything you can tell us about that? Um, Fall was written about a, uh, a relationship that I had a, a while ago that, uh, sort of, uh, fell apart in a, quite a sad way. Um... Uh, I guess the lyrics of the song sort of go into the to the uh, to the reasons why that happened, and and it was also a sort of introspective look of like a, sort of I suppose both of us were guilty of doing similar things to each other, and that's why uh, in the bridge uh, Sophie sings the uh, Sophie sings the lyrics of the chorus back at me. Uh, oh, no, yeah, and shout out to Sophie Jest, uh, the amazingly talented uh, female singer on the song. Yes, she's amazing. All right, Josh, thank you so much. We'll play the fall now. Good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the Mosh Pit Backstage Podcast. You can subscribe to us on iTunes and Omni. To find out more about the show, go to www.syn.org.au slash moshpit. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash moshpitonsyn and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at moshpitsyn. The regular Mosh Pit radio show broadcasts punk, rock and metal tunes and interviews every Thursday nights on Sin 9.7 on FM and digital radios. Listeners outside of Melbourne, Australia can stream Sin 9.7 online at www.syn.org.au. Thanks to Vintage Ruin for the music. Hi, this is the Muscle from Flash Gun Apocalypse. Hi, I'm Enid from Girls Go. I am Phoebe Pinnock from Heaven the Axe. Hey, this is Gary Oldman of the Misfits. Hey, this is Kat Sproul from Horizon's Edge, and you're listening to The Mosh Pit on Sin FM. Hi, this is Aina from Leopard. Hi, I'm Virginia Lilly from the band Lilly. This is Raoul from 1449. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ali from Eberhead. Hey everybody, this is Charlie Benante with Anthrax, and you are listening to the Mosh Pit on Tips.